So now we're going to talk a little bit about magnesium. This is a magnificent element right here. This is why I chose to use this in my reactor. Anytime I make hydrogen gas, that's always my first choice. This metal, this was recovered out of the reactor. You can see how it has been dissolved to make hydrogen gas. Some new pieces. If you look in the back here, I have the snorkel on this thing today. When I was working with it earlier, I wanted to turn off the reaction so you can shut it down anytime you want. Looks just like that. So I don't know if you guys saw that in the last video. See it goes in the in the water right here. It'd be inside the bucket like this. You know, I normally have it in there. And if I want to open the valve and it just shoots the, the hydrogen gas right down into the water really quick when you open the valve. And if you ever have a blowout here on that side, it would just go straight down. So it's really nice to keep it in the bucket and keep it cool. The water when it's in here keeps it very cool. And you can run it a lot longer. So this metal right here is an element I like to use to produce my hydrogen gas. Number 12 on the table of elements. There's lots of other metals you can use, but that's my favorite. When the entire process is complete, all you gotta do is dump the reactor out right into this bucket and fill it up with the garden hose and dilute everything and you can dump it right out in the garden. See, there's no harmful byproducts, only water and magnesium chloride is the only thing left over. It's essential part to human diet. So it's a very safe metal and one of my favorite. And they say over in Egypt that was what they were doing inside the pyramids, but we may never know if they were doing it with electricity or doing it chemically. Not too sure how they were getting their hydrogen. There's a lot of debate over that. Maybe they were doing it chemically. So if you think about it, this atom, not only is it the smallest atom in the universe, it's also the lightest and the thinnest, so it's easy to make airships. Now we're going to fill up some balloons right here. I got my magnesium. Already got the reaction going. You see everything's running. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to shut off this flame. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the balloon here and fill that up. We're going to make a real quick weather balloon. So hydrogen has huge lifting capabilities. It's much greater and more powerful than helium. you got to remember that. So that one little proton, that electron spinning around, that's what gives it all its lifting power because it's so small, it's so light, and it's so thin. Remember, hydrogen by itself isn't even flammable. When it comes in contact with the oxygen in the air, once it gets in contact with the oxygen, you have a flame. Okay? And you can hardly see that flame. Think about that. I'm going to touch it so you can see it. So it's a very pure gas. It's so pure and so clean that you can't even see it. Now remember that. So let's take some of this air and fill up this balloon here. And remember, you can't have a combustion process without oxygen. So it's using the oxygen, the ambient air oxygen, to make that flame you see right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut off that flame. What's cool, you don't need flash arresters and all that normal stuff that you have when you're using oxygen. I'm going to go ahead and hook the balloon up here. Let's hook that up. I'm going to open the valve for the balloon. And shut the valve to the flame. See, here's my balloon. Add some books on it to squeeze out the air. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this balloon up real quick. With pure hydrogen. I'm going to use it as a little airship just to show you that you can fly with this wonderful atom. We'll let that slowly fill up there. They say the Egyptian pyramids ran like this, but we may never know. You know, that's part of the mystery.
a really good way to add more fuel to the reactor without having to depressurize and to keep the reaction going is to have a two valve system. And what I do is I take an extra piece of magnesium and I drop it in there that it's in the chamber, it's ready. I'll close this valve and then whenever I want to drop a new piece of metal down into the reactor, all I have to do is open this valve. See? And it's always closed under pressure. And you can do that every time. That way you don't have to depressurize every time you want to add a new piece of magnesium. You can have a continuous flame or you can continuously fill things. Two valve system. So the reactor itself is impervious to hydrochloric acid. You can't harm PVC with hydrochloric acid, okay? Especially a dilute solution. But when you're finished, you want to wash this reactor out with the hose really well and wash out the hose. So this thing lasts you a really long time and you want to take care of it. You want to take care of the snorkel. And you don't have to glue the snorkel on. You could just put it in there like that. And as long as the pressure's not too high, when you open that valve, it's just going to shoot it right down into the water. And you guys know the two valve system, so you can keep adding to the reactor. So it really is like Legos, you know, how you want to build it and work with it. And I always keep it in this bucket, and it's good to keep the reactor cold because it does generate heat. And magnesium may cost a little more, but it's very nice metal. It's, it's harmless to humans. And when you're finished, all you got to do is dump everything out in the bucket and super dilute it with the hose. You can dump it right out in the grass. As long as you dilute it with the hose, you're fine. And it's a continuous process and hydrochloric acid can be produced very easily with electrolysis reactors if you have a Hoffman apparatus. So depending on how you design your system, whether you have a, a double valve where you're working like that or a single valve, you don't have to make it complicated if you don't want to. I'm using a single valve system right now with very dilute acid. You know, I'm doing this to show you guys so you can control the fumes and the rate of the production of your gas. You know, if I was to glue these pieces on there and make it permanent, I would have the two valve system and I, I wouldn't have to relieve pressure and I continuously make hydrogen gas. So my likes about this is that you need no oxygen and no electricity is required. It's easy to begin storage techniques doing it this way. There's no oxygen, it makes the gas a lot safer. You know, and it's solid fuel, it can be stored. Think about that. Now you have backup. You know, and hydrochloric acid itself can be made very easily, many different ways in electrolysis. You can make weather balloons, okay? You'll be able to make weather balloons, think about that. You know, this is all easy to do. It's easy to use a reactor like this. It's very simple. All you need is a bubbler. I mean, heck, you can even operate it without this bubbler right here. But it is nice to have a bubbler. Cuts down on the fumes and the little pieces of, of acid that come through here. You don't want it to damage your balloon. It'll bust the liner. So it's good to have a, a bubbler to work with. So I'm slowly filling up my balloons. Starting to look like a pumpkin.
So just remember, whatever you do in life, don't forget this symbol. It's the most important symbol in the universe. It represents endless amounts of clean power and energy. It's where all the real out of this world treasure is hidden. There's more to life than just running in a hamster wheel. Yeah, this is the most important symbol to your freedom in the galaxy. Don't forget that. Whatever you do. If there's anything you learn here at my channel, it's don't forget this. So as we continue on, the magnesium atoms are being consumed by the reactor. As we keep producing more gas and filling the balloons, remember this is pure hydrogen gas. So if a, a tracer round goes through here or an alien shoots a laser beam through this thing, it's going it's to catch fire because of the air that's in the ambient air and the oxygen that's in the atmosphere. But these are full of pure hydrogen. Make sure you have a rubber band like this so you can tie off the end and fill the balloon. This is my weather balloon right here. I'm going to hook this thing up. So I really hope that helps you guys. I enjoyed making this video. This was part two of the uh, pure hydrogen generation video. Pure hydrogen gas generation video. So make sure you see part one. These are the top three metals that I use. Magnesium, aluminum, and zinc. Magnesium is one of the best. You can see how the reactor has a double valve and a single valve system. It's a very simple, advanced yet simple technology. I was just scratching the surface of what you guys would be able to do and accomplish with this, this technology. I mean, it's very simple. I was able to accomplish everything you see here without using any electricity. So we made all that gas and these balloons and everything you saw I did was done without consuming any electricity at all. Think about that. This is a cool way to produce your very pure hydrogen gas without any pollution or byproducts. Just another path to follow using simple chemistry. You can make all the gas you ever desired. So hope this video helps. Remember, hydrogen's in the beginning. It's the genesis, hydrogen, the very beginning. It's the first thing on the table elements. So it started the Big Bang. If you work with hydrogen enough, you'll understand how they came up with all that. So I hope this video helps. What's up, kitty? What you doing, buddy? How are you? You wanna watch the balloon go? Here we go. Here it goes. <laughs> I got stuck. No way! That totally sucks. You better blow out of there. Great. A failure. Damn it. Finally, there it goes. Looks like it's gonna hit those birds. Look out, birds!